The next topic of our discussion is hepatocellular carcinoma. So hepatocellular carcinoma is actually the malignant neoplastic proliferation of hepatocytes. Hepatocytes are the liver cells. Due to certain mutations, these hepatocytes become proliferative and increased cell division results in, results in formation of a tumor which is known as hepatocellular carcinoma. Hepatocellular carcinoma is common in Asian countries such as China, Taiwan and Korea. The most common cause of hepatocellular carcinoma in these countries is vertical transmission of hepatitis B virus. Moreover, hepatitis C virus results in hepatocellular carcinoma in the endemic regions in the West. The average age of occurrence of the disease is 30 to 60 years. In the Asian countries, due to hepatitis B virus infection, the peak incident of hepatocellular carcinoma is between 20 to 40 years, whereas in the Western countries, the age of discovery of hepatocellular carcinoma is usually more than 60 years. Hepatocellular carcinoma is more common in males than the females, the ratio being 3 to 8 ratio 1. The most common risk factors of hepatocellular carcinoma include hepatitis B virus infection and hepatitis C virus infection. Both of these diseases can progress into chronic liver disease resulting in liver cirrhosis. Since hepatocellular carcinoma occurs due to chronic inflammation, metabolic disorders such as alcoholic liver disease and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease are also the risk factors of hepatocellular carcinoma. Moreover, the other metabolic diseases such as Wilson disease, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and hemochromatosis also result in hepatocellular carcinoma. Aflatoxins are specific toxins which are produced by the fungi such as aspergillus. Aflatoxins also result in chronic inflammation of the liver and hence resulting in hepatocellular carcinoma. Hepatocellular carcinoma due to aflatoxins is more common in the African countries. Chronic consumption of alcohol resulting in alcoholic fatty liver disease also results in hepatocellular carcinoma. Moreover, anabolic steroids and smoking also pose a major risk factor for hepatocellular carcinoma. So coming on towards the pathogenesis, in most cases of hepatocellular carcinoma, there is underlying liver cirrhosis, which is occurring as a result of continuous cycle of damage and repair. This cycle of damage and repair results in the liver cirrhosis, which leads to hepatocellular carcinoma. The causes of chronic Inflammation include hepatitis B virus infection and hepatitis C virus infection. Hepatitis B virus is particularly important because it produces a specific protein known as HBX protein. This HBX protein is directly carcinogenic. Moreover, hepatitis C virus also results in genetic mutations and increasing the risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. The metabolic diseases such as alcoholic liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and including the congenital metabolic anomalies such as Wilson's disease, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and hemochromatosis also result in chronic inflammation of the liver, hence predisposing to hepatocellular carcinoma. The next is the aflatoxins and alcohol. Aflatoxins bind covalently to the DNA of hepatocytes, hence resulting in the mutations due to DNA methylation. Out of all the kinds of aflatoxins, aflatoxin beta-1 is the most common and it also results in the mutation of tumor suppressor gene known as TP53 gene which predisposes to formation of hepatocellular carcinoma. Coming on towards the genetic mutations, so like all the tumors, there is mutation in tumor suppressor genes which is most commonly the TP53 gene. And this mutation is actually a loss of function mutation. TP53 gene actually inhibits the excessive cell growth. So once this gene is mutated, its function is lost. And there is increased cell growth and cell division of the hepatocytes resulting in hepatocellular carcinoma. The second group of genes that is mutated is known as proto-oncogenes. Proto-oncogenes are those genes which increase the cell proliferation and result in cell division. In this case, there is a mutation in beta-catenin gene. This beta-catenin gene upregulates the cell division and cell growth. 
the proto oncogenes undergo a gain of function mutation the gain of function mutation means that their function is enhanced so the enhanced function of beta catenin mutation results in increased cell growth and proliferation which ultimately leads to hepatocellular carcinoma an inflammatory mediator known as interleukin 6 is also thought to play a role in hepatocellular carcinoma the interleukin 6 regulates the hnf or hepatocyte necrotic factor 4 alpha and this results in decreased hepatocyte differentiation which leads to formation of atypical cancerous cells resulting in formation of hepatocellular carcinoma hepatocellular carcinoma is also thought to arise from certain precursor lesions precursor lesions are those lesions which are not cancerous at first but they have a potential to transform into malignant tumor the first of all is the hepatocellular adenoma which is a benign tumor of hepatocytes which contains the potential to become malignant hence resulting in hepatocellular carcinoma moreover cellular dysplasia is also common in chronic liver disease dysplasia means formation of abnormal immature cells that differ from the original population of the cells cellular dysplasia in chronic liver disease can be of two types the first is small cell change in this case the cells become very small and they differ from the normal hepatocytes the small cell change is thought to be directly pre malignant the other type of cellular dysplasia is large cell change in the large cell change the hepatocytes become exceedingly large hence different from the normal hepatocytes large cell change serves as a marker for increased risk of hepatocellular carcinoma but in cases of hepatitis b virus infection large cell change is thought to be directly pre malignant the third precursor lesion is dysplastic nodules again dysplastic means a different kind of formation that does not resemble with the surrounding environment in case of liver cirrhosis there are multiple nodules present inside the liver amongst those nodules there are certain nodules that differ from the nodules present in the liver these nodules are known as dysplastic nodules these dysplastic nodules can be of two types the first is low grade dysplastic nodule which somehow resembles the other nodules this low grade dysplastic nodule may or may not transform into malignancy the other type of dysplastic nodule is high grade high grade dysplastic nodules do not resemble the other nodules at all and high grade dysplastic nodules transform into hepatocellular carcinoma coming on towards the morphology the gross appearance of the liver is enlarged which is due to the presence of tumor the tumor area might be pale or yellowish in color from the normal liver the yellowish color is due to fatty liver diseases and the tumor might also be greenish in color in cases when the tumor cells are well differentiated well differentiated means that the tumor cells resemble the hepatocytes and they perform their functions the greenish appearance is due to the formation of bile by the tumor cells the cut section reveals a unifocal multifocal or an infiltrative growth of the tumor unifocal means there is only one single mass of tumor multifocal means there are multiple masses of the tumor and infiltrative growth means that the neoplastic cells are immersed within the normal hepatocytes the hepatocellular carcinoma metastasizes through the blood vessels hence it also spreads to the veins the tumor forms a specific pattern which resembles a snake like movement and hence it is known as serpentine pattern the tumor invades the portal vein or it may invade hepatic vein in case of hepatic vein invasion the tumor sometimes also extends to inferior vena cava and often in the right heart this vascular invasion of the tumor also results in the venous occlusion so while describing the histology of a tumor always remember that there are five points that you have to explain the first is the pattern recognition the pattern recognition means 
the tumor cells come together to form a specific shape or a pattern which in this case can either be trabecular they may form nests or pseudo glands the trabecular pattern means the strands of the cells which are separated by the connective tissues the nests mean the cells come together to form a group or a bunch of cells which are separated by the connective tissue as you can see here these are the nests of the cells which are separated by the connective tissue the pedocellular carcinoma might also form pseudo glandular pattern pseudo glandular means poorly formed glands the next point to explain is the cell differentiation in hepatocellular carcinoma the tumor cells could either be well differentiated or they can be moderately differentiated the more the cells are differentiated the more they resemble with the hepatocytes the cells can also be poorly differentiated or anaplastic cells anaplastic cells are typically those cells which exhibit pleomorphism pleomorphism means having multiple shapes not resembling the original population of the cells and performing various functions so anaplastic cells exhibit pleomorphism there is a high nuclear to cytoplasm ratio which means they have an extensive cytoplasm and they have prominent nucleoli moreover there is a loss of polarity loss of polarity means that the anaplastic cells do not perform the hepatocyte cells functions well differentiated and moderately differentiated tumors have a good prognosis whereas the poorly differentiated or anaplastic cells within the tumor are indicators of bad prognosis the third point is about the mitotic bodies these mitotic bodies are extensive in the malignant tumors whereas they are very scarce or absent in the benign tumors the fourth point is about focal necrosis the focal necrosis is a hallmark of malignancy whereas it is completely absent in the benign tumors the fifth point is about the metastasis or any specific feature of the tumor the hepatocellular carcinoma spreads to certain other organs through blood vessels the most common sites of metastasis include lungs bones and brain the hepatocellular carcinoma can either be formed in the setting of liver cirrhosis or it can be formed even in the absence of cirrhosis in the presence of cirrhosis the signs and symptoms of the hepatocellular carcinoma are mostly masked by the chronic liver disease or liver cirrhosis and in this case the clinical features of liver cirrhosis are more prominent which include ascites variceal bleeds spider angiomas and portal hypertension in case when cirrhosis is absent the patient presents with dull abdominal pain often with the fullness of the abdomen there might also be a history of fatigue malaise and weight loss sometimes there is a palpable mass in the right hypochondrium which is due to extensive enlargement of the tumor jaundice and fever are also present in hepatocellular carcinoma in certain cases a specific tumor marker of hepatocellular carcinoma is alpha fetoprotein alpha fetoprotein is present in almost 50% of the cases of hepatocellular carcinoma ultrasound of the abdomen reveals a nodular mass or increased size of the liver due to formation of tumor MRI and CT scan are also employed to detect the extent of the tumor and the definite diagnosis is established on the histological report of the biopsy the treatment is with surgical removal of the tumor as well as chemotherapy and radiotherapy are also used and in cases of liver transplant the disease often reoccurs due to presence of tumor cells within the veins so this brings us to the end of discussion about hepatocellular carcinoma